A missing person report has been filed as local teacher, Mr. Nyson, is nowhere to be found in a time where his students are in desperate need of e-learning. This leads us to question, was he kidnapped? Will he return? Will there be a substitute teacher? We have reporters out in the field as last known whereabouts. I'm going to send it over to our correspondent, Patrick Starr. Patrick, do you have any updates on this? Thank you, Derry. This was Mr. Nyson's last known whereabouts. As you can see here, it looks like he was all set up for the day, Wednesday, May 13th. But where is he? If he's all set up, what heinous crime could have happened that he is not here? Oh, this just in. We have news from Sandy that we might have whereabouts on him. So I'm going to send it over to Sandy. Thanks, Patrick. Sandy here. As you can hear, there is music playing, so we ran as fast as we could to cover to see if Mr. Nyson could be found here, but he is not here. Back to you, Gary. Thanks, Sandy Cheats. I'm going to send it over to Pearl. We have new information about his whereabouts. Pearl? Thanks, Gary. I'm pretty sure I know where he's at. I'm on my way there now. Oh, I found him! Doesn't he know it's time for e-learning? He's out planting sweet corn! Some say that he is outstanding in his field. It's time for e-learning! Oh, we better hurry! I gotta get inside! We got a lot of math to learn today! Let's yeah, go. come on! Let's, let's go! Wednesday, everybody. You know, sorry about that. You know, I lost kind of lost track of time. You know, I tried to never have a sub. I was just out there trying to get the sweet corn. I figure if I grow enough sweet corn, then I'll be able to play the piano by ear. But no, seriously, trying to get the sweet corn in before it rains tonight. It's supposed to be nice weather. Finally, the cold maybe will go away. But there's a lot of great jokes about sweet corn and growing corn. Some are rather corny and some are rather amazing. But, you know, I have a hard time remembering jokes. I'm kind of like that worm in a cornfield. You know, they just go in one ear and out the other. And so, hey, make sure you take attendance for this Wednesday morning. Don't forget. And we're ready to start the e-learning for today. What we have in store for pre-algebra day. I better take my hat off. There's no hats in school. And so now I got ring hat head on my head. So, but remember today, if you're in math counts, the online state competition starts and you could have already registered. You can register right now. And so you need to use your AOPS account and it'll be exciting. And it's not based on your score. You can win a graphing calculator, one of the cool ones from Texas Instruments. They're worth like a hundred bucks. And so, and you got a good chance of winning one. And so participate in that and you will get smarter. And so don't worry about your score, just be a part of it, it's fun. And so we're gonna today, the notes are gonna take a little longer. Up to this point, we've been graphing straight lines. Well, straight lines means linear and you get your straight edge out. Right, Connor? Straight edge. But today, we're not using a straight edge, so these things are not gonna graph straight lines. We're gonna talk about how would we graph something where I don't know how to graph it. I can't just do y equals mx plus b, and where do we begin, and how do we move? And so, this is assignment number 125. And so, on 125, we're going to fill this in here. Make sure you write a 125. It's kind of hard to write the 125 and then start the first problem, but we'll do that. And so, how do you graph a function you're unfamiliar with? That's the big deal. And what did we do the first time we did all that? Oh, we got to get it right here. So what would we do, Gloria? Whoa, it's upside down. Yes, use the function machine. And we just pick old numbers and plug them in. And that's what we're going to do today. So what's the easiest number, Gloria, to plug in? Yeah, zero. And if we plug a zero in, we're just going to go right there. What's zero cubed minus four times zero? Well, that'd be a big old zero. And so we're going to plot that point, zero, zero. Give me another point to plug in. Josiah, 1. 1 cubed is 1. 1 minus 4 times 1 is 4, and that would give me negative 3. And so that would be 1, negative 3. Hopefully I graph these right. What number do you want to pick next, Caden? 2. Excellent. Well, plug 2 in. 2 cubed is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 minus 8 is 0. 
Whoa, that didn't make a straight line. Mr. Nyson said before, if they didn't make a straight line, I made a mistake. But see, you know these are not going to make straight lines because there's like exponents in them. And these exponents actually make families of functions. And then we can predict by what exponents they have what they look like. And that conversation goes all the way up through algebra, all the way up through algebra 2, pre-calculus, calculus, and into infinity and beyond, Buzz Lightyear. And so we're going to keep it going. So we pick a 3. Scott, what's 3 cubed? 27. Very good. What's 4 times 3, Scott? 12. And 3, 27 minus 12 would be 15. And old Buzz Lightyear's flying off the graph. That'd be way up here. And so this graph goes down, up, and don't cross that next line because 3 isn't going to cross till you get to like 15. So don't you dare cross that next line. you got to be careful on how you graph this. Now, should I just guess at what this side is? Is that what I should do? No. You should pick numbers. So what would be a negative number, Baylor, to pick? Yeah, negative 1. Well, what's negative cubed? The negative times negative times negative is a negative. And then here, I have negative 4 times negative 1. Well, negative times negative is a positive. And negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So, negative 1, 3. Yeah, I should have just went like that. Oh, yeah, that's how it goes. No, it's not how it goes. Don't be predicting things. You have no idea what you're doing. Ryan, what's the next number we should pick? Yes, negative 2. What's a negative 2 cubed? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, Ryan? Yes, that'd be negative 8. And then negative 2 times negative 4 would be positive 8. And then that would make a 0. Whoa, negative 2, 0 would be right here. I think the graph turned around. Beep, 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 backing up. So let's pick one more. Let's pick negative 3. What would that be? John, negative 3 cubed? Yeah, negative 27. And then a negative times a negative? Positive 12. And so that'd be negative 15. So we'd go right, left 3 down 15. Well, that'd be way down here somewhere. And it doesn't really matter because we're going to curve up, curve down. And we'll just draw the arrow and say we're headed towards it. And yes, this is called a cubic function. And all cubic functions, you can say it graphs like an S or an N. And they have a family. They have a shape that we are not studying today. We're just introducing different families to you. And let's talk about this x to the fourth family, okay? On this x to the fourth one, we could do the same thing. What is the easiest number to plug in, Ainsley? Zero, my hero. This term is zero to the fourth power. This term, when you do your homework, is negative five times x squared. And you always square things first before you multiply by negative 5. Because the negative 5 is not in parentheses. You just square the x. And a negative squared is a positive. So if you don't know how to use this, your brain's actually better. And you'll get the right answers. So 0 plus 0 plus 4 is 4. And that's 0, 4. Now if we plug a 1 in, this would be a 1. This term, 1 squared is 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, plus 4 would actually give me 0. So 1 gives me 0. If I plug a 2 in, I would get 16 minus 20 plus 4. And that would actually give me 0. If I plug a 3 in, 81 minus, this would be 9 times 5, not 15 squared. 3 squared is 9, minus 45, or plus negative 45, plus 4. Well, that would give me like 40. That's way off the graph. So 3 is going to be 40, way up here. Well, the thing is, you wouldn't know to do this, but if you pick like 1.5, and I typed it into my calculator, 1.5 to the fourth minus 5 times 1.5 squared plus 4, I'd actually get like negative 2.1875.
And that would mean that that graph would dip down here. Well, this would go like this. It would dip down to this. And it would go way up to 40. Like that. And it has to be a function. So it has to pass the vertical line test. So don't make your line curl back in like that. Make sure it gradually just goes out. And that boop, flops over. Now, we can plug in negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3. But a little understanding goes a lot better than just brainless plug it in, plug it in. What are we doing to the x's each time when we plug them in? We're taking them to what power, Owen? Yeah, we're taking them to an even power. So a negative to an even power is just like, Owen, yeah, taking them to a positive to an even power. So all these values are going to be exactly the same. Now, if they weren't all taken to an even power, this is not true. But that would give me 0, and that would give me 0, and this would give me 40. Boy, that does that look like a 40 over here? That was a 40. And negative 1.5 would still give me uh, negative 2.1875 because a negative squared is a positive and positive squared is a positive. And so then we learn <coughs> in class that if you have an x to the fourth function, that graph's not that good. They graph what shape? A W. And so, and then sometimes the W's are upside down. Sometimes they're right side up. And we have lots and lots to learn. There's never end to the learning of math. There's always more to learn. Okay? And so, but we're not talking about cubes and fourth powers today. We are just going to focus on X squareds. And all your homework is going to graph those. So let's figure out what shape those make. X squareds are all called quadratic equations. And so the word quadratic doesn't mean four. It actually means an X squared. And so they have an X squared term. Sometimes they have an X term. Sometimes they don't. So we have letters in front of them. Like this is a B. B zero, you won't have that. This, in general, there's an A in front. And if A is like negative or positive, we can tell what it does to the shape. And then we always have the constant term c, and that would be a function. We could say a quadratic equation. And then in algebra, we set them equal to zero, and we spend entire units discussing quadratic equations. But they all graph the same shape, so today is the beginning. We get to figure out what shape they graph. And so we're going to start with x squared minus 2x minus 3. The very easiest number to plug in, Phoenix, is a zero. Now, you can use your calculator. You can type in zero squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3, but a little thought, Phoenix, that would be negative 3. And so that would be right there. Now the next number to plug in, always easy. Joseph, yeah, 1. So this would be 1 squared minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 minus 3, and that would give you a negative 4. So that would be right there, 1, negative 4. Well, let's keep going. 2. What's 2 squared? 4. 4, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is, yes, negative 3. Ooh, I see it turning around. Let's pick 3. 3 squared, what would that be? Peyton, 9, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3. What would that be, Peyton? Yes, that'd be 0, so that'd be 3 comma 0. Let's pick 4. All the points are fitting. If they weren't fitting, we'd pick different numbers and go, let's figure out where it's going to fit on the graph. All these, the main part of the graph, will fit on the graph. And so, Lucas, what's 4 squared? A game at lunch? No, 4 squared, 16. And then 2 times 4, Lucas, 8 minus 3. And so that would give me a 5. And so 4, 5. And so we notice that these points are growing further and further apart. And so this graph down here starts looking like this. And don't cross that next line until you'd like plug a 5 in to see where it would cross. But then we see it's going this way. Now, here's where people are going to have trouble, plugging in negatives. What is a negative squared? Connor, 
Yeah, it's a positive. And then I would change this to plus negative 2, plus negative 3. Connor, what's a negative times a negative? Yes, that's a positive. 1 plus 2. But then it's minus 3, which gives me 0. And then that would be right here. Then we pick, and we notice there's patterns. This is why we're all so good at math. We notice stuff. We have a little confidence. We plug in a negative 2. A negative squared is a positive. And a negative times a negative is a positive. And then we subtract the 3 and we get 5. And so this would be left 2 up 5. And what do you start noticing? We start noticing that every point has a partner. You know, Bert and Ernie, Siskel and Ebert, you know, Jack and Jill. Everybody has a partner because there's like a middle. There's like a line of symmetry with this. Now, the easiest problems are where the line of symmetry is the y-axis. And the harder ones are when the line of symmetry is not the y-axis. Well, we'll talk about all that when we get to the homework. And so this graphs a U-shaped curve. U-shaped curves are not called parabolas. They are called parabolas. Matters which emphasis you put on your syllables. And so it is a parabola. And they graph a U-shape curve. And so all of your homework tonight is going to graph a U-shape. It is not going to be, those are little quotation marks. They're not going to have any straight lines. Don't be getting your straight edge out. Just a smooth curve. Now the U could go up or the U could go down. And we're going to see what causes the U to go up or down. And so this last example on the notes. We will learn how to graph these without making charts, just like we did graphing lines without making charts. But that waits for Algebra 1. And so, easiest thing to plug in, Lincoln, 0. Now, if I was typing this in my calculator, minus x squared, the x squared will always be positive. But what you're doing is you're multiplying it by negative 1. And so you're squaring it first, which will always be a positive, and then a positive times a negative will always be a negative. And so you need to realize that. That's what's going to cause people to goof up. That little term right there. Well, 0 squared 0 minus 6 times 0 is 0, and then this gives me negative 8. Well, that's not going to help me goof up. 0, negative 8 is right here. Then we plug a 1 in. But see, 1 squared is 1 times a negative is a negative 1. And then it's minus 6 minus 8. Well, that's minus 15. Well, 1 minus 15 is way down here. It's not even on the graph. I'll just draw an arrow. That dot is somewhere down here. So I don't want to pick more positives because I'm probably off the graph. I'm zoomed out. Can you see me? I'm not in the window. You don't know where I am. And so we have to pick negatives. And so if you're going to use your calculator, when you plug in a negative, you need to put parentheses around it. And if you don't, you're going to mess up your homework. And so I'm typing it in. See how I put parentheses around why I'm squaring? Because what's a negative squared? A positive. And if you don't put parentheses around it, your calculator is going to think a negative squared is a negative, and you're going to miss them all. So if you're going to use a calculator, oh, a calculator is the answer to everything, you better be putting parentheses around it, or you're not going to get it. But look at this. A negative squared is a positive times a negative is a negative. That's negative 1. And see, it becomes negative 1 plus 6 minus 8, which gives me negative 3. And so this would be negative 1, negative 3. I plug in a 2, a negative 2. A negative 2 squared is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. So that makes negative 4 plus 12 minus 8. Well, that gives me a 0. So negative 2 comma 0 is here. Notice how the first two dots were 5 apart, then they're 3 apart. I wonder how far apart the next dot's going to be. Negative 3 squared is positive 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. 
minus 18 minus 8. Oh, plus 18, because a negative times a negative is positive. I almost goofed that up. And so that would be positive 1. And that's a 0 right there. Then we plug in negative 4. But there's some very interesting things going on that I begin to notice, and the same was true in the last problem. These were 5 apart. These were 3 apart. These are 1 apart. These are odds. You know, 1 squared was 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared or 3 squared is 9, 0 squared is 0. These are 1 apart, these are 3 apart, these are 5 apart. Remember when you're adding when you have perfect squares, they're always the next odd apart and graphing a parabola, it's the next odd. So isn't that odd? That this one, I bet you, is going to be right here. If I plug negative 4 in, I bet you I get 0. And if I plug negative 5 in, I bet you I get negative 3. And if I plug negative 6 in, I bet you I get... The only reason these go by 1, 3, 5 is because in front of your x squared term, there's a 1. If there was a 2 in front, it wouldn't go by 1, 3, 5. It'd go by 2, 6, 10. And if there's a negative 1 in front, that makes my parabola go upside down. And a positive 1 in front makes the parabola go right side up. And all these things we're going to learn and discover. And so we're going to see if all those things hold true. Okay? So let's get the homework started. And you have a printout, so print it out, and then we'll just graph right on it, okay? On the homework, you might ask, well, how many numbers do I have to plug in? Well, you have to plug in enough numbers so you can see the U-shaped curve. And so if they fit on the graph, you should be plugging them in. If they don't fit, they don't fit. And so this is assignment number 125, or 5 cubed. And make sure you remember to put your name on it. Sometimes I'm printing a bunch of stuff like, oh, wait. Whose paper was this? So make sure you get your name on stuff. Always plug zero in. Zero, negative six. Now, does it always mean that the parabola is going to be half on one side and half on the other of the y-axis? No. But I will tell you, you will notice which ones are and which ones aren't. You plug a one in. One squared minus six is negative five. If I plug a negative 1 in, a negative squared is a positive, and 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Ooh, it looks like that is going to be on the y-axis, where half's on one side, half's on the other. And so, and those are one apart. I wonder how far the next ones will be, and the next ones will be, and the next ones will be. Now, this one here, you will get this wrong unless you rewrite this as negative 1 times x squared plus 4. You are squaring it first. And then you make it a negative, and then you add 4. Well, 0 will give you 4. If you plug a 1 in, do you get a 5 or do you get a 3? What would it be, Brody? Yeah, it'd be negative 1 plus 4. That would give you a 3. If I plug a 2 in, 2 squared is 4. Hey, we still got to finish the start the homework. And so you get negative 4 plus 4, and that would give you 0. Oh, wait, I plotted these in the wrong spot. I can't even count. Zero, 04 is right here. Ooh, some of you are like, I got to email Mr. Nison. Zero, 04 is right here. One, three is right here. Two, zero is right here. And you know how I caught my mistake? Because these are one apart. These are three apart. I bet you I know how far the next one's going to be apart. Five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21. Wait, Mr. Nison, the graph's not that big. And so if I plug in over here, I wonder where this is. So fill in the chart, but then you'll start realizing things on this. Okay. Now, when we get to the next two, number four 
will follow the 1, 3, 5 pattern distance on the graph. Okay? Because there's a 1 here. But this one will not because there's a half here. You plug 0 in, you get negative 2. You plug a 1 in, you get a half minus 2, which is negative 1 and a half. Or negative 1.5. How do you plot that? You go right one, down 1 1.5, down one and a half squares. You plug a two in, well, what's two squared? Four. Four divided by two is two, and that's zero. You plug a three in, three squared is nine, nine and a half of nine is four and a half, four and a half minus two is two and a half. But there is still a pattern. Instead of these being a part one, three and five, what are they apart? Half of one, which is a half. Half of three, which is one and a half. Half of five, which is two and a half. Half of seven would be three and a half, and that dot would be right there. And then I bet you the other side is over here. But you better graph it way better than that. You better be plotting points. Don't be showing me squiggle, squiggle. No, 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 no. Okay? Now, for the next ones, Four, five, and six. Four and five, they'll go up by the one, three, five. And then you'll notice which ones go up or down. Well, you're soon going to realize that this is negative one times x squared. Make sure you square it first and then multiply by negative one. And this will go by one, three, five. But you got to find where the bottom of the u is or the top. It might be off center and upside down. And so. And this is minus 4 times x minus 3. So this parabola is going to go upside down. This one, for number 6, on this, we have a negative 2x squared plus 5. So you plug a 0 in, you get 5. Well, that's right here, 0, 5. Make sure I can count squares correctly. I'll be more careful. You plug a 1 in. Well, it's negative 2 times 1 squared. So 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Well, is this a 1, 3, 5? If you plug a 2 in, 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. And so... Well, I plotted that one in the wrong spot. I'm always thinking about what's next. One, three, it'd be right here. I got to email Mr. Nice and made another mistake. One, three, and then two, negative three is here. Well, when you know what's really supposed to happen, you can, you can catch your mistakes just like I'm doing. Notice that this distance we used to say was a one. And this distance was a three. But this distance is a 2, and this distance is a 6. Well, 1, 3, 5, if you have a 2 in front of your x squared, you're just doubling these distances. It becomes a 2, 6, 10. Now, why does this one fold on the y-axis? How do we know that this is going to be exactly symmetrical across the y-axis? Because there's no x term. I'm going to tell you, anytime there's this middle term, and there's three parts, and you have an x squared part and an x part, your parabola is not going to be centered across the y-axis. It's going to be off-center. It's going to be like over here. It's going to be over here, up here, up here. But since it's negative, we are going to have this parabola being upside down. And you got to graph them a lot better than that. But see... When there is no x term, if I can move this thing, it's centered on the y-axis. But when you got three parts, it's going to be like off-center, and then you got to locate it. Well, how many points do I have to plot? Enough to make a good picture, okay? And so when we look at these last two, number seven is probably the toughest one. Eight's easier as long as you write negative one times x squared plus four times x plus one. And square it first. Put negatives in parentheses so you'll guarantee to get a positive or just think about it without using the calculator. And so like this one is negative one-half times x squared. So it's going to be upside down. 
And if I plug a zero in, zero squared, that zero, this is zero, that's a negative three. And so that makes zero negative three. If I plug a one in, one squared is one times negative a half is negative a half plus four minus three. Well, it'd be four minus three and a half, which would be a half. Well, that's going to be right about there. And then if I plug two in, two squared is four. Four divided by negative two is negative two plus eight minus three. And so that would be eight minus five, which would be a three. And so remember, this parabola is going to be upside down. So they're getting closer and closer together. And where is it going to be? So just keep picking positives, okay? And so do a nice job. Really try to connect them, smooth them out. The purpose of today was just to show you that everything in life does not graph a straight line. And when we throw the exponents in, that causes nonlinear. When the exponent is a 2 as the highest exponent, we call that a quadratic, which graphs a parabola, not a parabola a parabola. And so that's the beginning of many discussions that you are going to have in your future. So get your logic problems done. Get your warm-ups done. Get this assignment to me as soon as you get it done. And remember, 314 this afternoon, the state competition, you might say, I'm just a sixth grader. I wasn't an official competitor, but when you sign up, you click, I am an official competitor because your school officially is registered. So you can get calculators, and everything, and it's not based on your score. And you can win one, and the eighth graders might not. And so, but you have a good chance. And so get that done. And if you want to create teams and things, if you need my help, let me know. Otherwise, you guys feel free to create your own and compete, okay? So we miss all you guys. Hang in there. And so you guys are all doing a great job. Bye-bye.